Hey, I'm Vanessa the X, one of the contributing editors at Book Riot. I hate how I look with my hair up, but y'all, it was a mess. I straightened it. It's raining in San Diego. This one piece kept going in front of my face and I look like the little girl from The Incredibles, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Today I want to talk to you about a subject that has been weighing on my brain, as it has for a lot of people that have come across a particular news story over the last couple of days. Uh, and that story is one of the revelation that the publisher Little Brown has decided to put out a book by a woman named E.J. Levy, who has written a fictionalized account of a really important and interesting figure named Dr. James Berry, who's a real person. Uh, he lived, I believe, in the late 1700s uh, through the middle of the 1800s in South Africa, where he rose to prominence as a physician, I believe as a surgeon. Um, and he was actually the inspector general of military hospitals at one point. So there's lots of really amazing information to delve into regarding his legacy and just what he contributed to history and medicine. However, this E.J. Levy person in this fictionalized account, you know, she does definitely reference all of the cool facts and figures that I just mentioned, but she also completely misgenders him. She does this big reveal towards the end about how all along he was a woman. And the part that's just really, really particularly incensing is that when called out about this and, you know, people came for her throat on Twitter and, you know, deservedly slow about how all of this constitutes just outright transphobia, she doubled down on the stupid. <laughs> you know, there are a couple tweets there where she sort of acknowledges like, yeah, I, I hear you, but, and it's what comes after the but that is just condescending more often than not. And she keeps on misgendering him. She just repeatedly uses the wrong pronouns and it just feels really deliberate and very like, I mean, fine, but like my book, right? <laughs> the part, I, there are many parts about why this is so absurd, but Dr. Barry had written and explicit instructions for how he wanted to be remembered and spoken of. He lived as a man, he wrote about himself as a man, like he just wanted to be remembered for being and living the truth that he knew to be true about himself. The truth that he knew to be true. Getting real eloquent over here. Before I get even more rambly than I'm sure I already have, I want to direct you to a really great piece written by one of our contributors, Alex. It is a much more cogent and eloquent and at times impassioned as it should be response to this bit of news. Alex breaks down the ways in which every piece of this story is problematic, why it's transphobic. And then also I believe Alex feeling a little bit like me, we're like, oh, we don't have the words <laughs> linked to some other important Twitter threads and articles that do go into this particular subject with much more like depth, nuance and very important critique. <laughs> so definitely check out that piece, which I'll make sure to link below. But as far as what I want to accomplish today with this video, uh, which was inspired by a tweet that I saw about supporting transgender authors and looking for books with good trans representation, specifically in the library system, I thought I would build upon that idea and just talk about four quick bookish ways that you can support trans authors and amplify work featuring trans representation since it seems so important. I will say that a lot of these steps could be applied really to supporting any author, whether from a marginalized community or not, but I'm going to try to give you a couple of little like side notes or suggestions for how you can take each of these action steps and tweak them a teeny bit to specifically give extra support to trans authors and books featuring trans characters. So tip number one, this is, you know, like a super secret tip that you would never have heard if I didn't say it first. <laughs> and that's uh, buy books. <laughs> I know. I do have other tips that do not involve spending money. So that's, I'm not by any means saying that you have to go buy books. But if you are a buyer of books, please buy books that are written by transgender authors and that have really great trans representation. A couple of side notes here. It's really important to go out of our way to find own voices work whenever possible. People from a particular community are uniquely equipped to talk about that community. <laughs> now that's not to say that just because an author is trans or lesbian or Latina that, you know, if we go out and write a book that's going to be like the official be all end all representation for everybody because we are the spokespeople for our communities, that's hardly the case. But because I think there is so little space given to trans authors writing own voices work it's important that we try to find it and tell the publishing world like, hey, these are the stories we want to hear. We want to hear them now. So buy their books if you can. 
Side note number two is if you can, pre-order the books. Pre-order numbers are really important for authors, so yeah, please do that if you can. Step number two, I live on a really busy street, y'all, is to review books, which is something I definitely need to get way better at. Whether it is on Goodreads, on Amazon, if you use those, if it is on your personal blog, if you write for a professional blog like I do, if you have a booktube channel, or just, you know, your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter feeds, wherever it is that you talk about books, talk about books by trans authors and the future trans representation, loud and proud. The side note slash extra tip here is to please do just a few extra seconds of research when talking about these authors to make sure that you are using their correct pronouns. It's just a really simple thing that you can do to tell that author, hey, I respect you. And failure to do so can be really hurtful. So again, it doesn't take long. It's usually really easy to find. Tip number three is to attend events if geographically, financially, etc., possible. It's just so important. Speaking as, you know, an independent bookseller, like I often do, there's a lot that goes into deciding what bookstores get, what authors, etc. But one of the pieces that we definitely get asked by publishers is like, great, so you want this particular author to come to your store? Cool. What was the last author that came to your store? And how many books did you sell and how many people were there? So not because of me as the indie bookstore or bookseller am I saying this, um, although obviously it helps us too, but Again, if you can attend these events, because it's so important just for the whole like author ecosystem in general. And also just put yourself in the author's shoes <laughs> if you show up to a bookstore and you're like, hey, it's just me and like three people. And one of those people is a bookseller. One of those others I think is her dad. <laughs> yeah, so just show up to support their authors. It's, it's really important. And finally, tip number four, uh, which was, like I said, inspired by the tweet that I talked about a little bit earlier, and I really wish I could remember whose tweet it was, but that is to check books out from the library that are written by trans authors and that have trans characters, but also take that an extra step further. Go out of your way to research which books aren't available at your local libraries and then go and request those. The goal here is yes, to widen the selection because again, more space needs to be given to these amazing authors and their work. But the other part that just really like ugh, got me and that is so true is that you as an adult using your agency to go out and request these books, specifically ones that are in like middle grade kids book and like YA categories could very much help put those books into the hands of kids that need to read these stories, want to read these stories and who don't feel comfortable or safe enough to request them themselves or who don't even know that they can. So again, it's such like a simple thing that you can do that could have a really wide reaching and just phenomenal impact. That's all I have for you today. Just four quick little things that you can do from your corner of the bookish world to support trans authors and to amplify work with trans characters. So important. And obviously these are just small steps, but small change often leads to big change and that's how we change the world, right? So thanks so much for watching. See you next week.